Have you ever thought why should we learn set theory? Where do we use this in computer science? And is it really important? Yes, it is. In set theory, we study about sets, relations, and functions. In programming, uh, there's something called array. What's that? A collection of similar type of data, right? So that's basically a set. And in databases, uh, we have tables with some rows, columns. Does it mean that there's a physical table inside the computer? No, it's just a logical mapping of the data. So some kind of a mapping or some kind of a relation. Uh, suppose I have two tables, some user table and some by data table. And if I want to search a user's bio data, what do I do? I pick up the user table, search for the guy and pick up the ID. And this is a mapping from the user table to the by data table. So using that, I get my information. So there is some mapping, so some kind of a function. So these mathematical concepts, uh, sets, relations, functions, these are the building blocks for the data organization in the machine. If you aspire to become a data scientist and if you want to play with this discrete numbers, then definitely you should master this subject. Hi, this is Krishna Teja and you're with GCS Prep. Set is a collection of objects of any sort. It's also called as a class or a collection or an aggregate. Here is an example. S, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is a set of numbers. T, A, B, C. A set of alphabet. Generally, we have a tendency to group the objects with common behavior. But it's not compulsory. A set can be heterogeneous. Something like K equals apple A 52. These are the objects or members or elements. In mathematical study, we generally deal with homogeneous sets. And there is a need for us to define a well-defined set. Which states that uh, there should be certain rules to tell if an object is a member of a set. So we can think of this as a well-defined set means there should be a membership clause. Suppose I have a set N with elements 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. The membership clause for this would be even numbers between 1 to 10. Based on this, I can say uh, whether an element belongs to this set or not. Like 2 belongs to N as it's an even number and it's between 1 to 10. And 5 does not belong to N as it's a odd number. This is a symbol for belongs to and this is does not belong to. Suppose I have many elements, then we can write like this A, B, C, so on till Z. So this is your many elements. For infinite elements, we can write like this 1, 2, 3, 4, so on, three dots. This is an infinite set. There is another intuitive way of representing sets using predicates and it's called as set builder notation. So S1, X such that X is an even number between 1 to 10. Or you can also write something like S2, some other set which is X such that X is a chocolate, something like this. So that was the set, well-defined set, membership clause and set notation. Let's move on to the counting of numbers. The number of elements in a set is called as cardinality of set, represented by a modulus or n of s. Here we have some sets a, 1, 2, 5, 9, 20. So the cardinality is mod a or n of a, that's 5, because we have 5 elements. Now looking to b, a, b, c, so on till z. So mod b is 26. S, it has A, B, M, N, and Z. The cardinality of this particular set S is 4, not 5. Because this element M, N is considered as a single element. Let's test the membership as well. Does A belong to S? Yeah, it does. So A belongs to S. How about uh, M, N together as a capsule? Yeah, it does. 
so this m n belongs to s how about z yes z belongs to s then m nope m does not belong to s even n does not belong to s membership of elements is something tricky so be a little careful while you handle this the next important concept is subset suppose i have two sets a and b and if every element of a is an element of b then a is a subset of b and this is a symbol let's write this in predicate notation as well for all x x belongs to a implies that x also belongs to b let's take an example here we have the sets a b c d e and f when we compare b with a we can make out b is a subset of a now look into c it's also subset of a how about d no it's not because 6 does not belong to a e is also not a subset of a but f is a subset of a now this is very important we need to be careful while handling a subset and a membership uh, something like um, suppose i have set m which has a b c and n is a we can clearly see n is a subset of m how about a is a a subset of n no it is not a subset a is actually an element which belongs to n so we should write it as a belongs to n this is a proper notation so do not use the subset notation for elements it can be only used for sets let's look into another example p is ab together and c and d is ab set uh, is a subset of p no it's not because this is an element in this particular set so it should be written as ab belongs to p if you want to write it as a set then wrap it with the brackets something like this now let's talk about the properties of the subsets every set is a subset of itself so i can write like this so it is reflexive if a is a subset of b does it mean that uh, b is also a subset of a no it's not compulsory it's only possible when a and b are equal or they are same so we cannot say therefore it fails in symmetric property if a is subset of b and b is subset of c does it imply a is also subset of c yeah it does it follows the transitive property equal sets two sets a and b are said to be equal if a is subset of b and b is subset of a it just means that they should have same elements and if i have to write in a predicate notation we could write this as for all x x belongs to a by implication x belongs to b that means an element should be there in both look at this 1 2 3 here we have 1 2 2 3 3 3 these two are equal because they have same elements 1 2 4 4 to 1 even these two are equal so the order does not matter and even repetition does not matter now look into this 1 2 3 in capsule then 1 2 3 these two are not equal because if you look into this capsule 2 3 this element is not there in the other set therefore they are not equal even these two are not equal because this one in brackets is not there in the other one therefore not equal now let's think about their properties every set will be equal to itself this therefore a equals a it follows reflexive property if a equals b does it mean that b equals a yes it does so it has it follows a symmetric property a equals b b equals c then definitely a equals c so it also follows transitive property all properties are followed the next type of subset is your proper subset a set a is called a proper subset of set b if a is a subset of b 
and a is not equal to b it means if a is a proper set of b then b should have at least one element more than a and in predicate form we can write this as there exists an element which does not belong to a but it belongs to b coming to the properties is a a proper set of itself no it's not possible so it's not reflexive if a is a proper set of b does it mean that b is also a proper set of a no because b has at least one element more so this is not possible so this is not symmetric as well how about transitive a subset of proper subset of b and b proper subset of c then definitely a will be a proper subset of c this is possible this is transitive you can check it universal set a set is called a universal set if it includes every element under the discussion this is very much contextual suppose i have a set of man women and maybe a set of children i would take the universal set as humans or maybe if i have a set of natural numbers some whole numbers and integers i would pick up the universal set as real numbers because it has everything so it depends on the context or depends on what we are talking about let's take an example a is 1 2 3 b is 4 5 c is 6 7 so if we write the universal set it should have every element that's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 on the other side we can also think of a set which has no elements we call this as a null set or an empty set represented by 5 or a simple braces with no elements few things to note about the null set phi that's null set which has no elements so cardinality is zero if we write like this this is a set with a null element so here the cardinality is 1 now this null and a set with null both are not equal and even this null element is not a subset of this particular set we should actually write this as null belongs to this particular set because that's an element of it now this is very important a null set is a subset of every set keep this in mind okay let's wrap it up whatever we have learnt so set is a collection of different objects which could be a finite set or an infinite set and if we count the number of elements we call it as the cardinality then we have learned about the subset which is actually a a collection of objects which have been taken from another set now the, it it could be of two types either an equal subset or equal set or a proper subset equal means both should have same elements proper means the second set or the higher set should have at least one element more then we have learned about universal set which has every element in the context and then we have said about null set which means no elements <laughs>